as humanity grows ever more populous and powerful. Natural systems that have been stable for millions of years are in turmoil. Plant and animal populations are rapidly declining, and species are becoming extinct faster than ever before. Scientists have begun to call this a mass extinction event. The last recorded truly mass extinction was about 65 million years ago, presumably because an asteroid hit Earth, the dinosaurs went extinct, and lots of other organisms went extinct, and we're now starting into another mass extinction, except this time it's not an asteroid, it's our own species, Homo sapiens, that's doing the job. Most of us know there's an environmental crisis, and we'd even say we're very concerned about it, but we behave as if it's not happening. I think what has been missing for some time is the realization that this is a human issue, that if in one century we've gone from two billion to six billion people, clearly the space of the planet is being deeply affected. If our influence on Earth continues to expand, I think we're likely to lose half or more of the species on Earth. The most uh, dire numbers, I think, are on the time scale of about 35 years. Now, if you ask the question, how many human beings might die because of the loss of biodiversity, we could easily be talking about billions because we depend on biodiversity for a wide range of ecosystem services, which if they falter, we're going to be in deep trouble. I don't think we in any way should feel complacent that we are not on the list of possible extinctions. What we're talking about here with extinction is a kind of unraveling of the fabric of life. Just the shock of that, you know, the sense of there's something going on here that's so threatening to my sense of well-being that I have to shut it out in some way. And everybody, I think, experiences that. I know many times when, when I was uh, initially reading about extinction, I would hear these overwhelming statistics, you know, three to 10 species going extinct every day. And I didn't know how to wrap my mind around these overwhelming statistics. Uh, what, what do you do when you find that out? Now, wait a minute, doctor. Steve, you wait a minute. It's, I think, beyond anything that humans have had to face ever before. And so the magnitude of what we're trying to do in terms of getting past this denial is quite large. Human thought is the source of our problems and is the source of our solutions. Until we address our way of thinking and our whole framework and orientation, we're going to continue to make mistakes. What I want you to do is to work on your attitude. My attitude? That's right. We need to have a new definition of progress, of the good life. Our senses have become attenuated in relation to nature. All of this is about reconnecting, re-relating to the fibers of our world. I feel that there is an invisible thread of compassion between people of like minds who are critically concerned about this issue, who are finding each other, who are creating alliances, who are creating organizations, who are creating a movement, a movement of survival, a movement of recovery. When the time is ripe, societies can change with incredible rapidity. We care about life. We care about the next generations. We need to bring this to bear in a radical, fiery, dynamic, and committed way. This is a critical, pivotal moment in history. I can feel it every day. It's almost like a pressure cooker. Things are, are shifting and changing. We're either going to uh, wake up or, or die. We don't know which one it's going to be. It's not too late. We have all that it takes to care for the world we inherited. We have only to make up our minds to do it and answer the call.